Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Sun Talks, uh, a podcast by ISSC. So in this podcast, we'll be talking to various ISSC staff, uh, student workers, and we'll be getting their insights on a lot of international topics, like international student related topics, and also like their opinions on some stuff and like some advice that they may have and try to have fun. And yeah, so for today, our guest is going to be Daniel Hoyle. He's the International uh, Students and Scholars Center Senior Director. He has been with ASU for eight years now. And yeah, so welcome, Daniel, to the podcast. You're a Pleasure first to guest. be here today. <laughs> so yeah, so you have been here for eight years now. So um, and have you like throughout the eight years have you been with ISSC or have you changed your department? Or? All eight years with the ISSC, ISSC. with the International Students Scholars Center. That's why I came to Arizona for this position within the office, and I've enjoyed it. I've loved it. I've had chances to grow and take on new responsibilities. So I've I've been here, and I plan to continue <laughs> to be here. And what do you think you'd say is the goal of ISSC? Like, what's the vision for ISSC as we continue growing and having more students coming into ASU from international countries? And to oversimplify it, the goal is to make sure that international students and scholars feel welcome, they feel served, they have their needs being met. Now, how that happens, of course, will continue to evolve as the university evolves as our students, you know, as, as they come and as they change and evolve and the services that they need to be successful and to feel welcomed, you know, we'll always be looking to our students for advice and support and ideas on how we continue to find better ways to be more involved and to serve them better. Yeah, so I think that's the thing, right? So right, right now, I feel that we're doing a lot of stuff for international students, right? Like I'm an international student. So when I came in, I had all the information that I needed. So all the way from the admission to visa to landing here and like getting the resources on like, you know, how I can travel from my apartment because I live two months away, right? So from campus, it's not easy to travel without a car. But I think ISSC has been doing an amazing job. And now seeing the back end of it, I think we're doing better but there's obviously more to do so like i think that we're doing a good job about that um yeah so like let's what, what are the services that ISSC provides that has evolved throughout so like we start like we have the front desk obviously that helps with like students having questions and we have events but then we're also expanding all that like this podcast is the first time we're doing it so what are the stuff that like in your eight years of experience that has like grown and what do you think that it will keep changing so well, to give an example, so, you know, we support students and scholars in a variety of areas, everything from your compliance is the word that we use. So looking at your visa status, F1, J1, and there are certain things we need to do to help and support you in that area as far as processing paperwork, registering your records with the U.S. government, providing documents, work authorizations. And while the regulations or the rules haven't changed, the way that we help you process those things have changed. Everything you know, when I started here eight years ago, a lot of things were very paper-based and a little more time-consuming you know, to where now everything's a little more, not a little more, a lot more online, <laughs> online and yeah. digital, electronic forms, things of that nature. So you know, even our routine services, you know, we've experimented with a variety of things over the year from, as you said, front desk, email, phone calls, appointments, live chat. You know, Now we have in-person and Zoom appointments, so that way in case... You can't specifically make it if you live a few miles away or maybe you're on a different campus but want to speak to somebody here at Tempe. Just trying to make it as, as inclusive and accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. And then as you stated, in, in, in as far as our workshops and our support in other realms, we've done everything from cultural activities, you know, partnering with student organizations, coffee and conversation hours to more recently, we've been doing a lot more with career services and with student organizations and career development, career support. We have a lot more students interested in things such as curricular practical training, optional practical training, our CPT and OPT, the work authorizations. And so how do we help students not only understand the mechanics of it, how to apply for CPT and OPT, but how to prepare themselves mm -hmm. for it? Yeah, I think, um, so I joined in spring of 2022, yeah. So when I joined, we didn't have the in-person Zoom, I mean, in-person meeting with um, advisors. We only had it on Zoom. And I think that now they're doing in-person. So like you can get to connect with the advisors and it really helps a lot. And I feel like in terms of events, it's grown. Um, like you said, Coffee and Conversation is my personal favorite. So I think um, shout out to Haley for that. But yeah, so, <laughs> so that's one of my um, favorite events that happens because you just get free coffee and you get to interact with so many people. I made so many friends through that. 
So, yeah. But the key to that, and my, 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 one of my pieces of advice that I would give to students and scholars is you have to take that step, right? Mm -hmm. You have to come forward. You have to participate. Even if you weren't super active your first time at the event, even if you're just there to check it out and to observe and to feel the atmosphere, at least you've made the step of going yeah. and seeing and experiencing. I think that's, that's my encouragement is you never know until you try it. As you said, we offer a lot of different things. We offer many you know, in areas from social to more professional to more immigration compliance based. And so just coming out and trying and seeing and, and getting yourself comfortable, because especially if you want to stay in the U.S. post-graduation, if you want to work and really get into the American workspace and culture and life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It may be difficult. I understand that completely stepping into a new culture, but you know, one step at a time, you know, take that first active step. Exactly. And the fact that you're moving away from your parents and like from your family and mm -hmm. your, your entire basically life and coming into a new country, it's difficult. I think uh, when I came here, I'm an undergraduate. So a lot of undergraduate students prefer to stay on campus, but I didn't. I stayed off campus. And what that really did was um, cause issues like, you know, making friends because I would live so far away that I couldn't actually come to these events and stuff like that. But then I think um, in my second semester of my freshman year, that's when I started going out. I started um, attending these events. I think um, at one point someone actually said that, you know, you're basically working right now because I used to volunteer for so many events and stuff like that. But that really helped me make friends. Right, right now I have amazing friends. I have like a lot of people and, you know, it's just like I'm walking down campus and someone just comes up and say, hey, I know you. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> you know, like... I think that, like you said, the taking that first step is really crucial. Like even if, like I, I never used to go out much in India. That's where I'm from. So I never used to go out. And now coming here, I think I've been, I don't, I come home late at night because I'm always out and helping people, like having events and like meeting people. I think that's. Not too late. I mean, you still got homework to do. Yes, right? yes. No, I do my homework <laughs> on campus. I do my, <laughs> I'm responsible. I, I yeah, <laughs> my, my parents are watching this. I'm responsible. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I think that's the first major advice that we can give incoming students, right? Which leads to my next question. What's your advice um, for freshmen who are just coming in, you know, first year students, obviously for like undergraduates, it's brand new from like graduate students. It's a new experience. So other than networking or going out there, what other advice do you have? I mean, just you said finding finding the opportunity. So we we have a, a a saying here at the International Students and Scholars Center. You know, we refer to you all as as the International Students and Scholars, and and of course, U.S. citizens fall under this category as well as global sun devils. So how do you really develop that global mindset? And that's going to be different mm -hmm. for each one of you, especially for those of you that are coming. Some of you have a longer time here than others, as you said, maybe an undergraduate's coming here straight out of high school, they're starting, they're going to be here for at least four years. Graduate students, their time may vary, you know, possibly a year for some master's programs to five or more years for some doctorate programs. And so your time, your interest, your abilities are going to be different. And so that that experimenting, that that testing the waters of, I want to try this, I want to try that. ASU has a lot of research opportunities. They have a lot of clubs and social organizations, sporting events, professional development, career fairs, and being able to organize your time and being able to evaluate what's happened, what you're feeling, what works for you, what you're comfortable with, where you see yourself changing and growing mm -hmm. during your time here. That's what's crucial. In the U.S. higher education system, we talk about not only your time in the classroom, but we often refer to a lot of time your, your, your other opportunities for growth. We call your extracurricular activities. That could be a job on campus. That could be a club or organization. That could just be your circle of friends. But trying new things, even, and, and, and I, I, I want to say this, even trying new foods. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I say that because I, I have met so many students who they come from a certain region of the world and even when they come to the U.S., they'll only eat foods from that, from region, that region of the world still. Now, granted, I know they're not always as good as they are <laughs> from your home country or from that region of the world. But, you know, being able to step out of your comfort zone and try something new, cooking something new, eating somewhere new, experimenting. And don't get frustrated. This takes time. You're not just going to come here and everything's going to magically fall in place you know, like a Disney movie where all of a sudden, you know, overnight you're singing and talking to animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it, it takes time. You're going to have some great successes. You're going to have some astonishing failures. Yeah, I think um, so when I came in, um, we had the welcome um, event. And then one of the things that stuck with me was he said that there's going to be a honeymoon phase and then there's going to be a dip. Like it's just going to go down and then you got to pick yourself back up. I think that's what happened with me because when I came here, so I knew the American culture because I grew up here for a bit and I thought that I was prepared. I thought that I was ready for whatever comes. But then I think that honeymoon phase lasted a bit longer for me. So when it dipped, it just fell. It like went like a roller coaster down. So, you know, learning to pick yourself up from that mm -hmm. point. And exactly, it's like trying new things. Like you don't even have, it doesn't mean that you have to like go through the stuff like, you know, therapy or something. I'm just saying like picking yourself up by going outside, like getting yourself out there, trying these new experiences. That itself alone does a lot. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this isn't meant to scare anyone. You know, mm -hmm. we all know this life has its its ups and downs, and it's knowing that, especially being a student here at ASU, as you were stating, there are many many resources mm -hmm. available to students to take care of themselves, whether it's study resources, physical health, mental health, friends, organizations, you know, career services to help with your resumes and cover letters. You know, you may have a resume or cover letter that you think is great, but you're trying to write for an American employer, right? Exactly. If you're thinking about work authorizations and how can you take that already great resume and make it even stronger, stronger yeah. even better, and tailored to what you're thinking about and what you want to do. You came here with a goal. You came here with a mindset. So how do we help you achieve those goals? I mean, let's be honest. You probably have seen movies about the United States. Yeah. You probably had some ideas of what the U.S. would be like, what you want to do. I said friends you want to make, foods you want to try, places you want to travel, you know, tap into all the resources here at ASU. Yeah, I think um, one point that you made really that stuck to me was I'm not an academic person. Like, I've always been an average student, but then the experience that I get from co-curricular and, like, these clubs and organizations, that's really something that helped me because I think, like, right now, my job with ISSE was through my experiences and through helping and volunteering rather than my academics or my technical knowledge, you know? So even now, um, I recently met up with one of my dad's friends. He works in a big company and um, I was talking to him and, you know, I told him about my academics, but I also told him about my, you know, co like co-curricular background, like my extracurricular background. And then I think he said that he's more interested in that because he's a hiring manager. And he said he's more interested in that rather than academics because he said that the um, experience you get through these, um, you know, activities and like the networking communication skills that you develop is something that will stick. And um, I think the best way to describe higher education in the United States is it's not academics mainly, it's everything. It's like, it's a, it's a step, it's like a stepping stone towards actual society and also have that productive bubble of a, you know, high school or a middle school. Well, like you said, so some of the vision speaking from a, a a U.S. citizen point of view, <laughs> you know, and as someone who's raising, you know, four kids right now, part of what we hope is, again, like this is a journey, as you're saying, and that you're experiencing new things, you're growing as an individual. Yes, you're completing your courses, you're getting down the theories and the ideas and the practices, the technical skills and expertise, but you yourself are finding new new ways of thinking, new friends, new perspectives, you're challenging you know, things that, you know, you may have grown up knowing before that things that you had always known because of either where you grew up, your family, and I'm not saying, please don't take this wrong. I'm not saying your family <laughs> was wrong or the place you grew up was wrong. It's evolving. It's building new layers on top of who you were before. It's, you know, making bigger, taller, stronger, better version of yourself. yourself I think, yeah, that's really important. And um, yeah, so coming to this, do you have any experiences or like any memorable moments as the senior director at ISSC that, you know, has stuck throughout this eight years and I think will stay with you for a long time. Has there anything been like that? Too many. <laughs> um, I mean, that's been one of the benefits of my specific role within the International Students and Scholars Center is, you know, one, having a fantastic team that I get to work with to help with, the, you know, the, you mentioned Haley and others that um, are on the team, you know, that you, you may come across and hopefully they'll be on the podcast or... Is this a podcast? <laughs> you know, late, later, um, you know, that kind of that provide all sorts of support services. And um, but part of my role is, is I, I get to, to meet with students and, and dig really deep with mm -hmm. them when they have, you know, questions, concerns, ideas, the things that they would like to see. And, and they want someone to speak to on that regards. 
taking a step back, you know, I've also had my own personal experiences. I, I have also lived and studied abroad. Um, I've traveled to quite a, a number of countries, and those have always been very, very eye-opening. I've been there. I've stepped out of my comfort zone. I've made mistakes. I've been laughed at. I've laughed at myself. Um, as, as I've done these things and I've learned these things, but, um, there are, there are just some, some experiences, as you said, that kind of make and define your time here. And that really, really make your experiences and, and help me to share stories, uh, without going too long here. One story that I'll share along the topic that we're going on right now was several years ago, I, I had a young lady who was in my office and the reason she was there, she said is, she said, Daniel, I want to find an opportunity to improve my English. Oh. I believe she was probably about a junior at the time, undergraduate student, so in her third year at ASU. And my first question to her was, you're a junior. You, you've been here for three years. I'm glad that you've come to this realization that this is a goal of yours, but what took so long? Mm -hmm. what, what, what brought you to this point? And her story to me was she had decided, oh, I do want to take advantage of some of these work authorizations, CPT, OPT. And so I applied for a job and my resume looks really good. So I, I was called in for an interview and I got to the interview and I, I could not have a conversation with them. No. The questions they were asking, the speed with which they were speaking, I just, I felt so embarrassed and, and I felt kind of ashamed. And so... I don't want that to happen again. And I said, well, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with me. Well, it's not fantastic that you had to live <laughs> through that. <laughs> but at least they were open about it. At least but yeah, but, you know, thank you for sharing that with me. You know, is this the story that I can, without using your name, of course, mm -hmm. you know, share with others to help emphasize the idea? And I said, well, why do you think you haven't improved so far? And, and her reason was, well, I've just... I've kind of kept my, as we say in, in English, sometimes I just kind of kept my head down. Mm -hmm. I've hung with my friends from my home country. We've spoken our language. I just go to classes and get the work done that I have to get done. But I haven't really stepped outside of that bubble, bubble. that area here in the U.S. And, and now I'm ready to do that. And it was, it was, it was great in those last two years in our kind of, we've kept, we kept in contact and communication to see her change and her growth because her goals change. And so, and, and you will, you'll change, your goals will change while you're here in the U.S. And that's fine. Yeah, I think it, as long as you realize that you have to, like, whatever issues that you have and you step up to, you know, mm -hmm. at least face them, I think that's a big step. It doesn't matter if it's in your sophomore, freshman, junior, as long as you do it, I think that's a big step. And I think, yeah, that's... Um, well, that's, that's a real human experience of realizing that there are things about you that, you know, you may not have realized before that you want to change or improve. It could be as far as language. It could be your ability to step outside and network and talk to people. It could be cooking. You want to exactly. be a better chef. You want to be a better friend. You wanna, I mean, there's a lot of things that, again, that take a real mature stance. And, and that's also part of what happens when you step outside of your own culture and your own you know, kind of safety zone in your home country is that the way that people see or do or view things are very different. And so you start to see people different. You start to see yourself very differently. Yeah, I think um, the main thing is the cultural difference, right? So um, how, how do you think that we at ISSC would want to help students, you know, change, like, exp like not have too much of a cultural shock? Because I think there needs to be a sweet spot between like, you know, just a completely new culture and then like your culture, like your home country's culture. So I think that we, like ISSC always has and will try to find like a sweet spot between that. And, you know, throughout the years, have, have you seen like the evolution of how that happens? What's your take on that? Have you seen anything? Again, this is Daniel's personal opinion. <laughs> I don't know that culture shock is a problem. I think it's how you respond bond to the culture shock that is defines what your next steps are and what you get out of it and what you, what you come from it. Even growing up here in the United States, so I did not grow up in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the East coast of the United States. I've been here in Arizona for eight years. I, I moved here for the job at the ISSC at ASU. That's a major difference though, like the weather. <laughs> You know, the, you know, the, the vegetation, right? The plants, the trees, the seasons, <laughs> I mean, season, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the colors of the buildings, you know? 
<laughs> everything was was very different, and it was a culture shock for me moving to Arizona. In my eight years here, it, it has. I, I've learned to see and appreciate the beauty, mm-hmm. you know, of, of the region, of the desert of Arizona. But even Arizona itself, you know, you have everything from Flagstaff up north where you have mountains and pine trees to, you know, down here in Phoenix and the valley, down to Tucson where they have caves and some other, you know, different just, you know, landscapes that you can participate in. But for me, I think the biggest thing we can provide for students is not necessarily to avoid the culture shock, but how to view it, how to respond to it, and how to grow from it, Mm -hmm. right? You come to these workshops, you talk to other students. We have, you know, events like Story Slam Night where you come and share your stories for others to hear, and then they can connect with you and network afterwards, and you two can talk and speak and grow together. You form new friendships. You talk to your faculty members. They have office hours about how you can do better or do more in their class or make more out of your time research opportunities, jobs on campus. So for me, it's about, it's not about culture shock. I don't want it to seem like some big scary beast. Uh Like we make it seem sometimes it's going to happen. I said, even, you know, you being from India, I'm sure, I don't know if you've visited other parts of India, North India versus South India. I'm sure there are some linguistic (laughs) and food and other cultural differences. Um, But like you said, it's, it's, it's not necessarily avoiding the culture shock, but having the tools to say, okay, I've experienced this. And that's where your parents can be helpful. ISSC and other offices can be helpful of just having someone to talk to. And try to like phase out of that and just settle down a bit, I think. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, the thing is, so I'm one of the few people who actually enjoy this heat. So when you were talking about the heat, I'm just thinking like, (laughs) you know, it's October, it's 100 degrees, I still enjoy it. (laughs) Please don't hate me for that. There are weird people everywhere, you know. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't know. I think um, so the city that I'm from in India, it's um, like one day it's going to be 100 degrees. The next day it's like 60. So there's the difference. But now it's like consistently summer. So I'm okay with that. (laughs) But yeah, so I think, like you said, we should not look at cultural shock as like a major big thing. But rather than it's just like a small step that is part of the package of moving to a new country, especially to a different from a different country. And so I think that's... um, yeah, I think we should focus on making sure that like people, students are not fixated on that. And then, just... well, there's there's the Chinese proverb, and I apologize if I misquote it. Um, it was, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one okay. step. I think so. I've heard of that. Yeah, it's, it's a famous. Thing. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I just have a good list of questions that I'm just asking. So <laughs> I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so this is like one of the main questions that I think. Um, really matters to a lot of students because, you know, ISSC is a department at ASU. So it's not a club, it's not an organization run by students. But I know that ISSC always collaborates. And I think we both have spoken about this, but that ISSC collaborates a lot with, you know, student organizations, um, you know, different uh, clubs. So how, wh- first of all, why? Uh, because I know that not a lot of departments do this. I know that um, the career and professional development services do it. And then ISSC does it. Um but what is the reasoning behind, you know, being so open about, you know, collaborating with these clubs? And also, secondly, like, how do you expect the benef- like the benefits to be showcased? And, like, what are the benefits that you have in mind when you collaborate? Yeah. So some of you may know, and if you don't know, I'll let you know. <laughs> ASU, instead of having, we don't use the word goals, ASU has design aspirations. And there are nine of them. And one of them is engaging globally. And when you think of engaging globally, you might think, oh, maybe I need to go to another country or study abroad. But that, that, that could be a piece of it. But everybody's experience is different. So for international students, of course, you're already studying abroad. Yeah. You're already <laughs> here in the U.S. And um, part of what we are looking at is you know, we want students to have as much you know, opportunities and knowledge and you know, just whatever they need to make the most of their experience here. And we believe that by doing this, by working with student clubs, but specifically by empowering students, Mm -hmm. you know, when we collaborate with students, what we try to do is we try to, for lack of a better word, stay in the background Mm -hmm. and and, 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 help direct them to the resources, help guide them, give them the opportunity to take on that leadership role Mm -hmm. to one, as I said, have the experience, develop the skills, organize, create events. And then by so doing, by, by doing these things, 
help make ASU a global campus, help to share their ideas, their culture, their food, their holidays, their knowledge. It gives a chance for us to make ASU truly that global campus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, you know, studying at ASU this semester, we know we have enrolled over 12,000 international students from quite a number of countries. That's a huge number. <laughs> and so that that's amazing. That's amazing that in just in, in, in this space here in the Phoenix area, we have, and of course Lake Havasu and other campuses that we have, but we have just that richness. And so part of our goal, of course, is we are the International Student and Scholar Center, but we don't want to, you know, hoard or keep all of that <laughs> richness and that diversity to ourselves. You know, everybody on campus should have the chance to know, you know about the skills, the knowledge, the culture, everything that our international students and scholars bring to ASU. And so that's part of our goal in, in getting students out there. As you said, A, to really help enrich the campus, but B, also to help enrich the students. I think um, one of the biggest things that I've seen is the amount of um, – student opinion that ASU actually takes in. And for example, we have the student governments, right? The mm -hmm. graduate uh, and professional student GPSA. And then we also have the USG, the undergraduate student government. And the fact that they have a say in a lot of the matters. And I spoke with um, the pre like uh, a previous chief of staff um, for these student governments. And they told me that the presidents, the student presidents that we have, meet with President Crow mm -hmm. and then every day and then they have a conversation about you know how to make ASU better for students how to make it more accessible and I think that's amazing because um, I have friends in different universities and I'm not saying that they're bad I'm just saying that this is something that I have not seen a lot and I think that that's amazing that you know ASU facilitates and obviously I think even international students are welcome to run for these positions and you know build themselves up and have a voice when it comes to how um, obviously, ASU does a lot, but, you know, address specific issues or problems which we may have, which honestly, I don't think is a lot. <laughs> but Well, and, and that's where a lot of the culture here at ASU starts, right? It starts from from President Crow. I love watching his videos that he does when he does videos for the university or for students. His openness here, you know, he does. He's not pretentious at all. He mm -hmm. said, hey, Michael Crow here, president of ASU. Yeah. You know, I love how he starts his videos. You can tell his videos, they're, they're him, right? They're, yes. not, they're not perfectly... Like you can connect with him. Like right, they're, just, they're yeah. very much just him and his personality, the way he speaks, the way that he thinks. He's very open in creating that culture. And as you said, that then leads to not only does he meet with the, the leaders, right? Mm -hmm. Typically, at least once a semester or so, he has open forums on every campus to where he goes. And he's in the student union, student pavilions on the various campuses. And it's just an open forum. It's open to all students. They can come. They can listen to him. They can ask questions. And things do happen from that. To give you an example, a few years ago, well, maybe not a few years ago, my, my time all blends together, um, there was an international student at one of these forums who said, you know, we international students, and, and I'm not going to exclude, you know, U.S. students, domestic students, they, you know, not a lot of them have cars either. But the point mm -hmm. was, you know, a lot of us, a lot of, you know, we international students, we don't have cars or vehicles. And so when we get a job on campus, and we have to process our documents, our I-9 forms, getting over to the HR building is, is quite a, a distance for us. It's quite a trek to get over there, especially if we're doing this, said, in the summer, early fall, you know, early, you know, late spring, where it's, it's like super hot. And then you know, this, it, it, it provides a burden to us. And so, you know, President Crow took that and said, OK, let's, you know, he started messaging people across campus. Let's find a solution for this. And one of the solutions that has been presented is for our international students, you know, we at the ISSC now provide certain appointments and times where students can come and process their I-9 okay. documents at the ISSC. You know, hopefully it's a more conveniently located, you know, place for yeah. them as far as in, you know, they may be coming here for some other support and services as well. So, again, like you said, we listen and we act where we can to, to make the experience better. Yeah, I think... Um the way that President Crow helps students is something that obviously caught my attention as a student, and I appreciate him for that. And um, yeah, as we we're approaching the end of the, our first podcast episode, um, I just wanted to ask: Do you have what is your advice? I mean, we spoke a lot of information, a lot of things, but from your personal perspective, because you also have experienced going to a different country, right? So, what is your personal advice for students as they come here and they start experiencing all these new um, differences, but also experiences? How, what's your advice for these students? I'm actually going to steal 
advice from President Crow on this one. So I'm not plagiarizing. I'm giving him credit. Um, in a lot of his videos that I've seen, especially videos that he has recorded for international students and, and a lot of new students, he typically ends by saying, raise your hand. We want you to raise your hand. And what he means by that is, you know, that's signaling you want to ask a question or you know, give advice, whatever it may be at the time. But basically it boils down to don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it in. If you have questions, if you have advice, find somebody at ASU, whether it's the ISSC, your faculty, your academic advisor, you know, whoever it may be at the time that you have access to and are comfortable with, ask questions. Mm -hmm. We're here to help. We are here to support. And we, we need to know what's on your mind. We need to know what you're thinking about, what improvements we can make, what help, what, you know, what, what is going on so that way we can provide the service, update the service, whatever it may be. But this is your time. You're here to study, to get a degree. But as we've talked a lot about, you're also here to have experiences, change, grow, develop leadership. So take the opportunity to ask questions, raise your hand and, and, and let us be of help to you. That's why we exist. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. And and on that high note, let's end it the way that President Crow ends it. And students, just ask. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you for spending your time with us. And obviously, students can reach out to you through email, I think, or... Through right, like you said, do, do like President Crow, you know, he always gives his email at the end of every video, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to give President Crow's email. You'll probably find it on another video. But again, like you said, you can just email, you know, ISSC at ASU.edu. You can address it to Daniel, and they'll make sure the email gets to me. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, and forks up. All right. <laughs>